Thank you. Uh, hello, I'm Yi Chen Shen. Today I'm going to talk about my work with Professor Hao Zhongzhen and Li Gao. Uh, my topic is about optimal second order way for content information decoupling and privacy amplification. Uh, for, for the content, we, com we my talk is separated into four parts introducing privacy amplification and quantum decoupling, the main result approve ideas and our conclusion. Uh, let's talk about the protocol of privacy amplification and quantum decoupling. For privacy amplification, given a classical quantum state shared by Alice and Eve, the task is to use some linear hash function from, H to, from X to Z to extract the uniform randomness such that the information linkage to Eve is negligible. Ideally, the uh, the ideal state should be the Alice uniform state tensor product with E's marginal state, and the protocol is shown in the figure below. Uh, as for quantum decoupling, the protocol is similar to privacy amplification, but this time Alice and Eve hold a fully quantum state. By applying the decoupling operation, uh, Alice hopes to decouple her system from Eve's system. We consider two different operations on privacy amplification and quantum decoupling. For privacy amplification, we apply the two universal hash function, where for the probability of the different x mapping to the same z should be equal or less than 1 over the cardinality of z. And for quantum decoupling, we apply the unitary map followed by the partial trace, where the unitary operator is chosen uniformly from the unicode group on other system. For the security criterion, we average over the trace distance on both privacy amplification and quantum decoupling protocol to measure the closeness between the ideal state and the resulting state. For privacy amplification, we consider the maximal extractable randomness, which is defined as the largest cardinality z, such that the error is uh, the error is smaller than epsilon. Similarly, for quantum decoupling, we define the maximal remainder dimension to show the largest remainder dimension C for an epsilon secret protocol. Uh, the main goal of our work is to find the one-shot characterization to both the maximal extractable randomness and both and maximal remainder dimension. To evaluate the tightness of our one-shot characterizations, we can consider the second-order asymptotics, which is a conventional approach. Uh, for the second-order asymptotics, given an unfold product state, the, we expect the operational quantity to be in the co-following second-order expansion form. And the importance of second-order expansion, why is the second-order asymptotics like a crucial for us. First, we can evaluate the tightness of the one-shot characterization. And second, the second-order term provides a correction to the first-order term for estimating the rate of the operational quantity, especially when n is small. For the previous result of privacy amplification, uh, Thomas Mitchell and Hayashi established a one-shot characterization for purified distance in terms of smooth mean entropy. And moreover, in Thomas Mitchell's study, he translated their bounds to using trace distance as security criterion, which we mainly concerned. And the result is shown as follows. As for the previous result of quantum decoupling, Dupuis et al. proved the one-shot achievability bound and the converse bound, which can lead to the bounds of the maximum remainder dimensions. The result is shown as follows. Uh, uh, for those previous results, their one-shot characterizations can lead to the following second-order expansions. Here, note that the upper and lower bounds of their second-order expansion disagree in second-order rate. Uh, we give some remarks of the previous results. In those previous results, the operational quantity is derived in terms of smooth mean entropy, with the error parameter on the superscript being a function of error. However, 
The upper bound and lower bound of the error parameters of the one-shot bounds are qualitatively different, which leads to disagreement in second-order rate. Uh, moreover, tight characterization in profile distance doesn't lead to the tight bound in the trace distance. The, uh, the dis disagreement of the error, error parameters in the upper bound and lower bound may cause significant gap even in the one-shot settings, as shown in this figure below. Uh, now like, we get into our main results. Uh, we first compare our work to the previous results. There are some differences. First, in our work, we analyze the trace distance without smoothing and without relating to the purified distance. And this allows us to establish the tight one-shot characterization using the conditional hypothesis testing entropy. And moreover, our result is optimal in the second order rate in the IID scenario which is the uh, main progress compared to the previous results. For privacy amplification, we have found a one-shot characterization for maximal extractable randomness, which is shown in this theorem, where the approximation symbols means equality up to some logarithmic terms. And the Entropy quantity here is the conditional hypothesis testing entropy, and defined as follows. For the maximal remainder dimension for quantum decoupling, we have the following one-shot characterization, which is shown in that theory. Uh, in the IID scenario, our one-shot bounds leads to the matched second-order rate on both privacy amplification and quantum decoupling, which is shown in less theory. Uh, for moderate deviation region, our result also applies to moderate deviation analysis. For any error that, uh, that vanish moderately quickly as n goes large, the rate of the moderation devi deviations for privacy amplification is shown in this theory. And similarly, the moderate deviation for quantum decoupling can be calculated as the result is as follows. Uh, now we talk about the proof ideas of our one-shot characterizations. The proof technique in privacy amplification and decoupling are technically not the same. However, their approach can be unified to the same framework for analyzing the trace distance error. Uh, our proof is segmented into the achievability part and the converse part. For the pr proof of the achievability part, we first define the projection to compare the uh, initial state to the decoupled state. And we use such projection operator to split the trace node into the following three terms. Uh, we can control the first term using the uh, information spectrum divergence and the remainder terms can at the same time be made small enough. And we can relate in the information spectral divergence to hypothesis testing entropy to finish our proof. For the proof of ideas of the converse part, we first use the variational formula to lower bound our trace distance. Uh, we now choose the operator pi to be a pretty good operator. The advantage of pretty good operator is that it has it can be converted to collision divergence and which can be relating back to hypothesis testing entropy and we can prove it prove our converse bound. In conclusion, we propose the method to directly analyze the trace distance for privacy amplification and quantum decoupling which leads to the second-order tight one-shot characterizations. And for an open problem, we use the pinching inequality in our proof of achievability bound. Is there a way to achieve the optimal second-order rate without pinching? Thank you for listening. We're going to directly follow with the second half of the merge talk and have the questions at the end. All right. 
Yes. Is my mic on? Yes. So the second speaker of this talk is Li Gao. Take it away. Okay. Thanks. Thanks, uh, Yu Chen, for the first half of the talk. For the second half, I will talk about uh, more on quantum decoupling and its application in quantum communication. This is joint work with Hao Zhongchen and Frederick Dubris. Um, in quantum communication, we are given a quantum channel and allowed to use multiple tensor copy of the channel. And from the message system M, we have a encoding CPTP map sending the M into the input of the channel. And after channel, we have a decoder CPTP map that's uh, converted back to the system M. And through this process, uh, uh, we have, through this process, we have a, a reference system we could assume the state is purified on A and R and the reference system is preserved. And we say the pair E and D, the encoder and decoder is a NRE code if um, it's pairing with uh, uh, end use of a channel and uh, preserve the purified state AR with the epsilon arrow. And the rate R is defined to be the logarithm of the dimension of M divided by number of use of a channel. So this is the communication rate. The quantum capacity defined to be the supreme of the rates uh, that for every small epsilon, arrow epsilon, arrow epsilon that you always have achievable codes. And it was a fundamental theorem in quantum communication that's by Lloyd, Schur, and Devitak. Uh, this, this quantum capacity can be characterized by coherent information of the quant uh, quantum channel, which is defined to be this supreme expression, ne a negative conditional entropy from the purified system to the output of the channel, the Bob system. And the supreme is over all pure states. And then the quantum capacity then is given by the regularization of the coherent information of the quantum channel because we are allowed to use tensor product uh, code words between different use of channel. In this talk, the, the regularization is not our focus. We want to consider the question if we are given a rate below the quantum capacity, how can we know the optimal arrow? That means you take uh, all inform of all possible encoder decoder uh, is decay. Uh, along number of use of the channel. So we want to really know how this optimal arrow, uh, how fast is decay. And our approach to use the one short decoupling theorem, and here we have the setting that our channel T can be an arbitrary channel. In Yu Chen's talk, he considered the channel T is the, the, the partial trace. And the, uh, the decoupling scenario is similar from the bipartite state AR. You first add the A system uh, unitary conjugation Turing, and then apply the arbitrary channel T. And on the other side, the reference system R is preserved. At the end, we hope the output state is close to be decoupled, means that it's a tensor product state. And we will be able to give an upper bound of the expected arrow of the decoupling um, by some constant times some exponential term to conditional uh, entropy. And here, um, for conditional entropy, first for the bipartite state row and also for the choice state of the channel. Here, the conditional entropy we use is the sandwich Ray conditional entropy, whose definition is as follow. And here, the informal will take us uh, all over density operator on R. Compared to previous results, uh, in 2010, Dubris and his scholars be able to show this decoupling arrow, the red part, can be upper bounded using smooth two condition entropy with some smoothing arrow. The smooth means that you are taking the supreme over a epsilon ball around the original state row. So our uh, estimates is without using smoothing entropy. And um, you may wonder how this decoupling theorem can help you uh, to do quantum communication. The idea is simple. You apply the decoupling theorem to the complementary channel, which means that you have the stand spring dilation U of the channel. A goes to B is the channel. A goes to environments is the complementary channel. And uh, finding a good unitary with a small decoupling distance, almost like a finding good isometry that the output is decoupled. And by Wu-Man theorem, we can extend this small distance to purification. Then we have the purify, purification of tensor product states is tensor product state of purification. So you recover the phi R on the other side. So 
the the output should approximate to that. Then you see your your state is faithfully sent. And now with our one shot with our decoupling result, we have this one shot coding theorem for the channel and the arbitrary pure inputs. There always exists a code for the channel, just one shot the channel itself. Uh, with the arrow given by these two exponential term, you can see the rate r is in the arrow exponents with some uh, Ranyi entropy. In particular, the second one, you have this uh, conditional uh, Ranyi entropy from r to b to Bob with a negative sign. That's exactly the coherent information. And uh, since the Ranyi entropy is additive over tensor product, our result apply to any uh, finite block lens that we have some exponential control for the arrow for the optimal arrow, and the the, the exponents, which is these two blue parts, will be negative if if and only if our communi communication rates is below the uh, coherent information. So this recovers the capacity theorem, and. If we compare this one with the previous results, if you're using the smoothing one, you would need uh, use the AEP property about the smoothing uh, condition entropy that's uh, asymptotically is like a linear with the normal condition entropy with some suborder term. So you can show it's eventually exponential decay because the exponent is negative. But you, you don't know what's the the end after that is exponential decay. In contrast, if you use our concrete bounds, if you give me communication rates R less than capacity, and also tell me what's your error tolerance, I can give you a concrete end that you be able to find a good communication codes. So that's that's the achieve uh, that's the improvement of our results. Um, and then um, I think now we are motivated to see what's the proof. Um, Recall that's the choice state of a channel, you just apply channel to the maximum entangled states. On the other hand, you can also see the output of channel is decided by the maximum, decided by the choice state. The way we do is just to put the state rho and the omega as a tensor product and pairing with uh, maximum entangled states. So this is like a duality between channel and the states. And we denote this duality by duality map uh, as theta. And we also recall that the Ranyi entropy, Ranyi condition entropy, is actually given by some operator space norm. And uh, the inequality we want to prove become a norm inequality. You may ask uh, why I bother this quantity is a norm. With the norm, we have tools from function analysis. Indeed, in this inequality, the r equals to two case is already proved in the 2010 paper. I equals the one case is just triangle inequality. Then in function analysis, you have some tool called complex interpolation showing that if you can control the boundary value, I equals to one, R equals to two, you'll be able to control the scene in the middle. And that's the proof. Uh, because of the time, I will just uh, show um, this converse bound. We can also control the um, have a lower bound for the expected decoupling arrow with one minus some exponential term also to Ranyi condition entropy. But here this is the path Ranyi, so it's different with the sandwich Ranyi. But we will be able to say that uh, uh, asymptotically a channel is sufficient to decouple a bipartite state as long as the sum of condition entropy is uh, strictly positive. And finally, I just want to mention that we have discussed the scenario when the rate is below the capacity, then the communication, optimal communication arrow should decay to um, zero with explicit exponential decay. The, what is wide open is the other direction. When the rate is greater than capacity, we want to ask whether the optimal arrow will converge into one. This is called a strong converse of quantum communication. Further, we even want to know whether this arrow Converging to one exponentially. For that, our, uh, our observation is that one needs to understand not the average um, decoupling arrow lower bounds, which we achieved in the previous uh, slides. What we need is the worst case, the minimal decoupling arrow. And that's all I want to say. For that, I would like to thank you. And then I can take questions. Thanks for the great talk, your great speakers, and thanks for keeping on time. We have time for questions. One question here. Sure. Uh, my question is for you, Lee. If you can go back to slide six really quick. 
this was the motivation for the talk today, and I kind of got lost for your motivation because it seems like you want your quantum channel to provide separated states at the end. And of course, that would give you a channel capacity of zero if your states were fully separated. Sorry, I was too fast. So I want to apply it to the complementary channel, which is the go to the environment part. So what we want to see here is the environment is sufficient decoupled with the reference system. That means that you have no information leaked to the environment, so that everything goes to the purification. Okay, that makes total sense. Thank you. Yeah, so that's the idea why decoupling is useful in quantum communication. Yeah, you want to decouple, yes, yes. All right, we have time for more questions. So I, I was curious about, uh, so I remember when I looked at decoupling and the, and um, the convex, there's a, in the context in the context of the convex split lemma, uh, if mm -hmm. you are aware of that, you know, the uh, you can kind of see that as some form of decoupling. Yes. Can your proof techniques be extended to kind of the setting of the convex split lemma? Yes, our proof uh, extend to convex splitting. Um, I think here uh, this we still think decoupling is more general. You can somehow formulate convex splitting as a special case of decoupling, but you have to change the model a little bit. Uh, but decoupling, we consider the fully quantum setting. Convex splitting, you still have some classical components. Yeah. OK. OK. You'd have time for more questions, if there are more questions? Well, if not, then let's take a break and until the next talk at 2 p.m. Thank you. Thanks, uh, thanks for speakers.